the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Let's define a few things very quickly. What does it mean to prosper? The word prosper means to do well. Please write it down again. The word prosper means to do well. You are living in prosperity to the degree to which you are doing well. It does not necessarily talk about finances. Not at all. In fact, as you'll be learning, financial prosperity is only one of the dimensions of prosperity hallelujah there are five dimensions to prosperity maybe i'll just list them quickly sorry we may not have the time to deal with them so we can talk about other things but there are five dimensions to prosperity and in the kingdom even if you have four over five you still failed you must have all five to be considered prosperous ready number one spiritual prosperity the first dimension of prosperity, I just want to touch on them very briefly. The first dimension of prosperity is called spiritual prosperity. The prosperity of your soul, your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter what else you have, if you do not have spiritual prosperity, you are terribly bankrupt. This is the advantage we have ignorant people will look at those in the world and say they are better off than those in the body of christ because they have all kinds of things and the question i'm asking you is have you sat down with them to know other things that they do not have let me tell you one of the treasures of spiritual prosperity is peace you will never buy peace in the market you show me a mall that sells peace show me a hospital that has peace like a blood bank to sell Show me a school that can award peace like a degree. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives. Let me tell you the truth. Many people who are blessed without God do not have this treasure of peace. They live in fear. They live in doubt. The higher they rise, the more the troubles in their lives. They suspect everyone. They can't sleep. They get to a point where they tell their wife, you know what? I know we are married, but based on the lecture I received, you start sleeping in another room right now. Because my financial advisor said, don't trust anybody. What a life. And just because of the presence of things around them, we believe they are better than us. Believers, you have to know the treasure you have. One of it is peace. That you can sit in the midst of a storm and smile as if nothing is happening. A state of rest. Are we together now? The kind of blessing, the kind of prosperity that comes with sorrow is, is not needed in your life. Many people spend their lifetime accumulating resources, trying to hustle and push through. And by the time they really become wealthy, the world's way, their health is deteriorated, their lives, their family, every other thing aside finances has died. That was the price they paid to be rich. Then they now begin to use wealth to regain everything they lost. That's how they spend their life. That's not a wise life. Spiritual prosperity. That you get to a point where in the midst of the influence and all the millions... You still have peace with God. You know that in the midst of all these things, my hope is not just in this life. The Bible says that if our hope is only in this life, we are of all men most miserable. Most of these people fear death. You know why? Because they are not sure they will be in control after now. 
they are used to control they are used to honor they don't know what it will look like after now but there is rest and certainty we are victorious both in this life and better when we are out of this place is a state of rest spiritual prosperity number two very quickly the second dimension of prosperity that we need in this kingdom is called mental prosperity the soundness of your mind mental prosperity Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 Paul was teaching the church in Ephesus and he had this to say having their understanding darkened he said being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them he says because of the blindness of their heart or their mind so Satan has an assignment that he can blind the minds of people and make your understanding unfruitful let me tell you you are prosperous to the degree to which you sustain superior belief systems belief systems that are beyond the realm of culture beyond your sociological context renewal and transformation is wealth i hope that we'll have the time to deal with one of the spiritual laws or one of the laws of wealth and abundance and then you will learn that true wealth is not pursued if you find yourself pursuing money you've missed it already you will never find it are we together that the moment you find yourself looking for or pursuing wealth you've started a journey that will never be complete that there is a technology in the spirit that brings these things listen to me give a madman one billion you didn't bless him and he will not bless you why there's nothing wrong with the money you gave him there's nothing wrong with his body there's everything wrong with his mind mental prosperity is real prosperity mental prosperity is real prosperity do you know why the mentorship sir the reason why in Africa we're not able to reproduce wealthy people is because most people did not become wealthy by following the pathway to wealth. Their mindsets were not renewed to match the level of wealth that they stole or accumulated. So they can't defend it through their transformation. It's difficult. So if, if you say rich people stand here, they will stand because of what their bank balance is saying. But now when you ask them to speak, their understanding betrays their results. They did not get it by knowledge. They got it either by stealing respectfully speaking or by some blind inheritance. Is the reason why we don't perpetuate wealth in Africa. The Jewish people made it as a point of duty. Before you see one shekel, one naira, there is a body of knowledge that must recalibrate your thinking. In fact, if all you were given in Jewish days were physical things, it was proof that your father did not consider you great. If you were considered great, you were not given physical things. That means if your father gave you physical things as a gift, it's proof that you are other children. Are you learning something? Listen to me. The journey to transformation is real wealth. In fact, in fact, in fact this is one of the grandest second only to your relationship with the lord jesus christ this should be your primary assignment to contend for transformation years ago i i remember this story now to my shame years ago i wanted to know the secret behind very wealthy people and every time i got materials all they were talking about was belief systems and traits and i felt they were very wicked and unfair what business are you doing for god's sake what are you selling what are you buying don't tell me behave well understand honor understand relationships what do i i mean we're, we're, this is africa we have serious issues what time do i have to learn really imagine that you meet me and i tell you i'm on a journey to prosperity so what are you doing now i'm learning on relationships <sighs> Your father will look at you and say, much learning makes thee mad. But how foolish I was. They were giving their best. 
if we have time by the grace of god we'll discuss two riches the capital that buys money that money itself is a product the name of the capital that buys that product is two riches and that may you never be so poor that all you have is money if all you have is money a day will come where everybody around you has the same thing at that point your relevance climaxes and you will never go beyond that realm you can only use money when there are people around you who need it but you will get to a realm where nobody around you needs money you will need to bring another kind of currency many people never get blessed enough to get to that realm so their entire theology of wealth is just cash but believe me there is a realm where money does not matter because everybody there has it you don't sell air because it's available so if you have a business that you're selling air i don't mean the one in the hospital just air to people who are alive and well you have to bring another kind of product hallelujah there are seven currencies that we use to transact with in this life the least of them is money as you know so i pray that god will grant us grace and will discuss it in the name of jesus christ so that when you leave church you can leave church even though trekking you'll be laughing like a madman and ignorant people will say something has happened to you have you gotten the job and you say i wouldn't love this much if all i got was a job i've gotten what is greater than a job i've gotten the capital that buys money you believe what i'm telling you listen you will walk out of this conference and you wonder the ignorance of the people on the street based on what and to know you were like that before you came to church you would thank god for church for the rest of your life now you will understand what it means when the bible says i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord there is something in the house of the lord that is not found anywhere else this is what the bible calls the power to prosper God gives you the capital that buys money and says go and he's sure that you will return back rejoicing and you will play life like a chess and you watch men and women pay for their ignorance and you will thank God for God you will thank God for your pastor you will thank God for your leaders and you will quickly gather your children to say I found something let me show you there is a key mommy when are we going to get the money and you say no i don't hate you that much let me teach you what is better than money that brings you money through riches never forget this just the title alone can bless you the capital that buys money money is a product there is capital that buys it but that's not even where we're going can you imagine we are still defining terms this is spiritual prosperity then mental prosperity the third level of prosperity is called bodily prosperity your health and your physical well-being your health and your physical well-being your health and your physical well-being health is wealth is a true statement Health is wealth. There are millionaires and billionaires today whose money cannot do them much because their health is so deteriorated. Let me tell you this. You have a responsibility to take care of this body that your spirit lives in. The reason is because there is a requisite level of health that allows your spirit to remain in this body. If your body deteriorates beyond that level, the spirit will have to live. A body has now prepared bodies are prepared they don't just it is your responsibility to keep the body prepared so that you can do much for the kingdom this is prosperity we deteriorate our health we wake up early in the morning and we sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow and then at the end of it we are giving naira and kobo and a few dollars and pounds and then we find out that these things do not have the power we traded we blame esau 
and Jacob and yet we make the same mistake every day when you give your health just for money that's the same thing you did health is very important I have the privilege to pray for people I pray for the sick all the time and I am amazed pastor at how helpless money can look like in the money is only useful when there is a professional who can administer something about your health but when the doctors tell you i'm sorry you have a week to go you hold all the money and see how powerless and valueless money is ask a dying man what is your greatest request he will not say bank a lot give me time the gift of health extend my life hezekiah said health is very important if you are healthy it is a blessing from god you should cherish in africa i'm told that the lifespan is 48 years we reject that result in the name of jesus but statistically speaking that if you are 48 years in africa they begin to tell you make sure your will is in place make sure if there's anything you need to tell your wife or your husband tell them quickly if there's something if you need to reconcile because they hope that you would not live long because we deteriorate our health we deteriorate our bodies number four the fourth dimension of prosperity is now called financial prosperity that's what we now call prosperity can you see that's only one over four financial prosperity let me define for you what financial prosperity is the absence of lack the absence of poverty alongside the negative effects that come with them financial prosperity is the absence of lack is the absence of poverty poverty there not just meaning lack of money but the capacity to be productive so you are financially prosperous to the degree to which you have no lack in your life to the degree to which you have the availability of financial resources alongside the capacity to be fruitful and to replenish this is a word we are going to be dealing with i hope you are not truly wealthy if you do not know how to replenish even if you are fruitful replenish is where the mastery of wealth comes from fear of money leaving you dies when you can replenish many corrupt people are not afraid of giving money because there is a corrupt system of replenishing i can give you ten thousand i can give you hundred thousand because i know how i can sign in a way that it will come back you only fear things leaving you when you don't know how it will come back again you know that god built our system in circles there is the hydrogen cycle there is the water cycle are we together now circles there is rainy season in nigeria dry season it is a system of replenishing so you can have confidence that by this time this will happen again predictability to your life the name is called replenish you will fear money leaving your business you will fear money leaving your life when you are only fruitful it's good to be productive but if you stop there you may not do much you can get to a financial equilibrium where as money is going, money is coming to the point where your harvest overtakes even your seed sowing. Replenish. May that be so for someone here. In the name of Jesus Christ. The last dimension of prosperity very quickly is called relational prosperity. Relational prosperity. Is God speaking to us already? Relational prosperity. relational prosperity what does that mean the health of your relationship be fruitful means be relational because everything multiplies on the basis of relationships everything it is your relationship with the holy spirit that provides an advantage for you in this kingdom it is your relationship with god that even secures your eternal destiny it's your relationship with the devil that destroys your life and destroys everything about you relationships are very very important at the end of your life there are things that are very important one of it is your relationships 
they define your possibilities in this life like pastor was sharing uh, before i came up that i i say it this way that all blessings come from god through men to men that means that if god says yes and a man says no the yes will remain in the realm of the spirit it will never manifest as yes in your life it takes both the spirit and the bride for the word to come the spirit says prosper the bride must agree with the spirit and say prosper too otherwise prosperity will not come god can say be healed but if there is no man to administer that healing the healing will remain in the realm of the spirit you need to understand that men are very important this is the world of men now this is where church people miss it we believe in god wonderful but we reject men to the detriment of our rising politicians understand this non-christian on <laughs> they understand this you know i always give this example what would make a man fly from the u.s ladies and gentlemen and come into nigeria abuja or lagos to celebrate the two-year-old birthday of a wealthy man's a wealthy man's two-year-old baby is the baby the man's friend why fly a private jet go through that rigor while he's flying there people say sir i'm still waiting for you and he ignores all of them ask jesus who canceled crusades to meet with certain men he was on his way going for a crusade and he meets a man who is a man of influence his relationship with that man could liberate others and he says zacchaeus come down i've changed it's your house i'm going to jesus did not hide the importance of men he would finish ministering to thousands of people and then he'll be with one person or a group of people it's only in church that we ignore people and we ignore them to our detriment one man can give a recommendation you can leverage on his influence and your prayer point of decades can be answered in a moment in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters is god speaking to us notice we're not even talking of business we're not talking of these are the foundational truths that we must have so when you are saying i am prosperous you know what you are saying my relationship with god is intact i continue to contend for a superior belief system my health and my physical well-being is all right my finances are doing well and then i have quality relationships indeed you are prosperous if you have four over five you are not there show me those without god and grade them by this understanding and then you see that you are admiring wrong people just because you saw the fourth key the fourth dimension so lavish in their lives most of them are afraid they don't know who trust them i mean they don't know who to trust they don't even know who can kill them they live with charms they live with all kinds of things no, he gives his beloved sleep. If I stop here this night, believe me, you have gotten something to go back home with. So that the next time someone says, I stopped coming to church because I got a job, you tell him, ah, I grade you now. I came to church and I was taught how to grade. You are not prosperous. You only have one over four. Or I just got a grant or whatever 10 million naira i don't need anybody to teach me again everything that is not represented in your mind and is in your hand will leave you it's a law it's a spiritual law everything is built twice if it's if it appears only in your hand you only held a rubber ring you go back no matter how long it looks to stay it will go back we don't secure things in our hands no we secure things in our mind so if you do not sustain the belief system that makes for a prosperous life you will find out that as an individual you're not doing well as a corporate organization you're not doing well even though the value that you provide is there you will still be shocked that things are not going on well don't worry we are coming to issues of value but just leave that one first five levels of prosperity can you turn it into a prayer and say lord i want to be complete i want to be prosperous indeed 
please everyone pray this is a very serious conference god is working on us you are praying Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete katos, kete branda kata pagotos koto breke teke ne kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.